Hi, my name is Ayman Aitani. Uh, thank you for joining the session today. I'll be talking about um, how to differentiate your business, especially if you're in B2B, how to, use a, how to differentiate from a communication perspective, and how to differentiate yourself from an execution perspective as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen to get started. In the meantime, I want to thank, uh, thank you guys for joining. So I have Raisa, Rami, Rasil, and others. Thank you. Thank you guys for, for coming in today. And I'll be answering some of your questions as well. All right, so we're talking about how to differentiate your business if you are not first to market, as we all are not first to market. Uh, I'll be doing a 30 minutes together today, and uh, whatever questions you have, I'm happy to answer them on Instagram. Now, let's let's start let's start with uh, a core concept to keep in mind as you're thinking and building your uh, business. If you look at everything being commoditized, you'll understand that execution is a differentiator. When I say everything's commoditized, meaning that your company, you, uh, what you're offering and so on, there are so many others who do this. I know you always tell me, I have discussions with business owners saying that. We're the only people who do this in Dubai, in the world, in the region. Or we're the only people who do it in this way, which is like a small thing. And I want to remind everybody about Instagram stories and Snapchat. I want to remind everybody about many different businesses that are were a feature and a function. It's a feature that was easily copied by somebody else. So that the feature cannot be differentiated. It's the execution of it. I talk about the company I founded that is that uh, I consider to be a commodity. I talk about my personal services as an advisor as a commodity. There are hundreds and thousands of others providing the service. Uh, it's a matter of how we execute and deliver on the work. How reliable are we? How much trust we can build with the party that we're working with? Um, how we can reliably, reliably execute uh, many, many times. So uh, that differentiator is on the execution. How can we systematically get customers? And how can we systematically execute on uh, the work for customers? Now we're B2B, right? So we're the B2B focus. In B2B, uh, like many of you are here, uh, right? So for example, you're in B2B uh, and others. So here you're looking at relationships. So relationships are what get you the business, the referrals of that, or when you're with your existing customer, how you're able to grow and upsell what you're doing here. So if we're looking to define execution, it's how you're able to build this relationship, continue to do this trust, and continue to to deliver the work and to communicate, communicate uh, during the process of this. From a B2C perspective that I see some others of you attending here is the B2C part is, can you communicate properly what you do? So you know, if you come into your end consumer, you say, we are the AI blockchain equivalent that disrupts and uberizes, blah, blah, blah. Okay, at the end of the day, are you gonna send me a card to pick me up? Are you gonna send somebody to, to come clean my house? Are you gonna, gonna deliver from that restaurant or location and so on? So that's the, at the end, uh, you know, what a, a clear communication of what is it that you really, really do. And in this, uh, I've given a, a webinar specifically talking about how would you explain what your business does, not to your mother, but to your grandmother who grew up before the internet, uh, before smartphones, and has little patience for, when you want to tell her over a heavy lunch saying, that, oh, uh, Tita, uh, we are the AI digitization, Uberization uh, that disrupts and changes and blah, blah, blah. From a BTC perspective, a key aspect as well is running the digital um, acquisition. So how are you able to effectively run campaigns to acquire customers? And that's we're looking at Instagram, we're looking at Facebook, we're looking at Google, down the line, you'll be looking at TikTok and a few other channels as well uh, for that, for your business. Again, I'm talking TikTok for business, uh, even if you disagree with that at this point in time. And then once you get those leads, how are you able to convert them to actual actual customers? Keep in mind, not the first person you dated is the person that, that, that you end up in a relationship with. You have to, they have to see you, you have to see them multiple times, you have to have some interaction here and there before it turns into an actual relationship. So that's when we look at the at the conversion aspect. And please don't do what, what we all do on dates is we lie profusely. We talk about how we're great at work, how we don't have uh, a controlling uh, mother or father, how we don't have personal issues and so on. So all of that is going to show up. So let's, uh, so the conversion aspect of this is important 
for building that uh, relationship and that trust. Now to differentiate uh, your, your, your business, we're looking at the execution aspect again, okay? So there are many food delivery partners, all right? And you've all used apps for delivery. There are some apps that you no longer order from because you know that uh, when you order, so i give you a personal example. There was a food app that I, I, I no longer touch because every time I, I've used others, they were able to deliver. Uh, the food and uh, with, with this one I've had issues and when I had issues what's worse is the customer service so the customer service part I bring up so I've had cases where I order food and then it's obviously it's delayed so the time estimate is 30 minutes 45 minutes in and I don't see anything and then when I speak with the delivery uh, through the app uh, I get topic I get excuses like uh, we're uh, we're unable to we're unable to reach the restaurant. So what I did was I called up the restaurant. I, I googled the number. I called up the restaurant and I said, "Hey, I have an order from this company." And I got to them. They told me it's delayed and they told me about the new estimate. So I, I cannot accept that an app that has money relationship with them could not reach that uh, 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 that restaurant. While me, who googled the number and called, I was able to find more information about my order. So my, my logic to them was, why would I pay you? I can go straight to the restaurant. If I wanted the mess of this delivery, I could have ordered from the restaurant that's incompetent of, of delivering straight to me. So um, the differentiator is the execution. So are you able to execute well every time? Uh, faster implementation, are you able to execute a little bit faster than others? Customer service issues, if they come up, can you address them fast or not? And well, with a good intention, Better services and you know being first to market is ideal, but I don't I don't see that as as the differentiator because there are so many hundreds of thousands of types of businesses that do more or less similar aspects. But please do not do not come in as a differentiator being cheap. So many of the discussions I have with the founders is oh we're cheaper. That's that cannot be a differentiator. Being newer that's not a differentiator. Having better employees that's not a differentiator. So that aspect is not enough. It's not enough to have, to have that. Although the employees part um, leads to better execution, but it cannot. It cannot be only only that. So being first to market is not is not prerequisite. So uh, I know many of you are spending time saying, "I want to quit my job. I have an idea to do this, or I want to add this line of business and so on." But there are so many in the country that do this. The execution work is. Uh, to, to take a, an example of Google, they're not the first search engine. They won't be the last, but they continue to be the, 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 the top one because every time you use them, you get the results and you get the results fast. And you get them, you get reliable, reliable results. And, and on the Google example, I've had cases where I was on somebody else. I've had a couple of cases randomly. It's a family member. I'm helping them on something on their computer. Uh, they always think that I understand this internet thing. That means I can fix fix something on the computer, right? So I've had many cases where they have a default browser, and the default browser is not uh, the search engine is not Google. And I know when I when I click on search, and I because I notice it, I was like, you know what? I mean, try something else. You know, you've been using Google for for years and years. Try something else. It, it won't hurt you, and it's a basic task. And I search for that basic task, and I get these weird results that make me so uncomfortable that I have to quickly close and go to and go to Google to, to do this. So that behavior tells me that the execution of Google every time is so natural to me and I'm so comfortable with it. As soon as I touched something, I had an opportunity to try something else and I did. I did not like the execution. I went back to execution I like. If there was an execution that was better than Google, I would have used it again and again and again. So that's, that's a simple example of, of, of what I mean from the experience perspective. I'm not saying you're Google or, or you can give the Google service. It's the experience that, 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 that I'm talking about. Another aspect as well is, I'd like to point out always, always, always when it comes to, especially if you're trying to add a new line of business or if you're looking to start a company, don't ask your friends and family about your idea because they will not use it. There's countless cases where, where I tell founders saying they will not use it and they say, hey amen, these are my blood, these are my family and they will and so on. And then months down the line after, after they practice, they say, do you know my family? Why didn't they use it? I said, I see this all the time. They will not use your product. They will not buy from you. If they buy from you, it's out of, you know, they just want to save face with you. They buy the first time, but they will not buy again. So you need strangers to tell you about the service if they will use it or not. And uh, I need to remind you about, you. we all have had bad haircuts. We've all had gain weight. And then I, I know for myself, when I gain weight, and my friends and friends say, Ayman, oh, you look so much healthier, which is a very polite way of saying, Ayman, let's, let's, let's lose a few pounds. So, uh, 
look for strangers who would who would who would don't care much about you or, or uh, on your sentiment and will prove to you by either giving you your money or not. And when they don't, they're going to complain. Or if they do and you don't execute well, they're going to complain about uh, about your service and how you're executing. And uh, what else? Um, yes, making sure that you know who else is in the market. There are many times where I speak with founders all the time, right? So many times where I've had a week. I remember very few incidents where I've had one week of speaking with founders in different countries, and they all tell me that they're the only person doing this in all of the Middle East. And then I ask them about, you know, there are, you know, three I met this week, and there are a few others that are public, and there are a few others that are raised, and so on. So how come you don't know about them? And then they tell me, spell it. And so I was like, what do you mean? Just, you know, this, this is your industry, and I'm, I'm tangentially being involved in your industry, and I know them. So they all feel that, we're the only people who do this and so on. So don't claim to be the first to market. Don't feel that, you know, that, that, that you're the unique one. So you need to know what, what they're offering because your customer is thinking about you and them saying, look, I have 10 dirhams, so I'm going to pay you or them or, 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 or who, who, are, who I'm going to pay, pay, uh, pay to use uh, that service. Um, what else? Ah, yes, I hate this chart. This chart I hate in every sort of pitch or every business pitch I have. It has you fully green and everybody else has something missing. You're the only people who can do this and do this well. And some of them even are, are audacious enough to say that we have, they, they list global companies, right? These global companies that have 40 offices, 600 employees, and they miss a few things. But you uh, with less than 10 people are able to, to, to deliver on this. This is not a competitive differentiator, right? So having a feature or function there is not a differentiator. It's, it's, it's how you execute on the work. Now, from a customer acquisition perspective, and this is for the B2B attendees of you, I would look at this because this is the equivalent of what, what we do for our customers who are in B2C. So we look at uh, how we are able to systematically get customers, right? So the end objective of the customers is appointments. So here, if you notice, we're not looking at sales, we're looking at appointments. So we're looking at, at appointments and the appointments. So how many appointments are you doing per week? Because if I need to lose weight, I need to manage my food. I need to work out. If I don't manage my food and work out, I cannot lose weight. So I cannot get on the scale every morning and say, hey, man, I'm not losing weight. I need to do the work, which is, you know, eating well, working out. So the new appointments and follow through appointments are the eating well and, and, and working out before I, I can look at sales aspects. Of it. So, so that, that, uh, uh, that's the key part of this. And to get to appointments, you're going to need to reach out to people that you know, people that you don't know cold outreach, the markets in the UAE and, and Saudi and the Middle East. I know many people who have been able to grow their business with cold outreaches, but they're systematic about it. Their B2B outreaches on LinkedIn, calls and referrals. So they're systematic about it, where you know, how many people do they speak with and so on to get new appointments of, let's say, if you're looking to really significantly grow your business, we're looking at 10, people, you know, 10, 10 meetings a week. Uh, if you're the business owner and you're doing the business development yourself, Ten, uh, and you're doing the operations, you cannot do the 10 appointments per week. You cannot do the effort to get 10 points per week. You might be able to do the appointments themselves, but not the effort to get those appointments. So you're going to need to have somebody to do, to help you with that, and you'd manage them and they'd work on the 10 appointments per week, or you'd get them to do, to line you up with the appointments, and then you can deliver the 10 appointments per week, or you need to reduce your, your operational involvement, or you need to reduce the number of appointments from 10 down to five or four, but that affects the growth rate of the business simply. For the B2C, we need to look at downloads, signups, bookings, return bookings, this aspect of, of, of conversion here that we need to look at. So that's an aspect of, we need to get the booking, I need the sign up to get the sign up, I need the downloads to get the downloads, I need the, uh, uh, the reach of people to get there. So that's what you would look, look to measure and do. Um, so just in summary, Everything is commoditized. It's how we execute, including me. It's how we execute and how we're able to reliably do this every time we are asked to do this or when we to do this or we have the option to do this. So how we execute and systematically acquire customers, how we systematically execute on the promise and how we systematically do webinar sessions, do the emails, do the calls, do the follow-ups and so on. So uh, that's it from a differentiator aspect. So don't worry about anything else other than being reliable in terms of your execution. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions that you might have 
for uh, uh, for any questions that you might have over Instagram later on. Um, so thank you for uh, thank you for coming in. Uh, thank you for participating. I'll be uh, emailing this out uh, uh, after we're done the topic presentation uh, as well as the recording. And uh, thank you, and I look forward to connecting with you in upcoming sessions.